This is the latest tank to its stores, the Russian Tier 8 Medium, the STG. Now, since its release, it's had a bit of a panning, to be fair. A lot of people have said it's pretty, pretty awful. But does it deserve that reputation? Well, that is what we're here to find out. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and I hope you all had a really Merry Christmas. Today we're looking at this tank, the Tier 8 Russian Medium, which is a premium tank, the STG. Now, it's only just been released, it's now in the stores and now you get your paws on it, I'll show you in a moment. But let's look at the tank first. Well, the damage is pretty average, the rate of fire is a bit meh, Penetration is pretty average according to this. The armor is just below average. Speed is above average. And as you can see there, it's got 1400, almost 1500 hit points. Pretty good frontal armor on the turret, but that's about it. View range, well, it's not too bad. And concealment is, well, as you'd expect from a medium. DPM is 1,767, reload time is 13 seconds, and the armor piercing APCR is 189 because I've got calibrated shells. Decent damage, 400 on your standard ammunition, pretty decent aim time. However, it has no, absolutely no gun depression, five degrees. This is my equipment loadout. Um, the reason I have the calibrated shells is because the penetration isn't that great. But that's not that surprising with a tier 8 medium. As you can see there, it's between 171, 189, 214 and 236. But the damage output isn't too bad at all. When I then stick it into tank compare, and I've taken a collection of tier 8 premiums here, we can get to see what it's really like. DPM is not the best, although it is better than the T34-3. Penetration, as I said, it's not the worst. Chimera, the T Type 59 and the T26 are basically better, but not the T54, not the T44. Don't forget, this is a Russian medium. Aim time, one second. I mean, it's brilliant. Dispersion is not that great. And as you can see there, gun depression of five degrees is pretty, pretty bad. Movement and mobility is, well, it's about average. I mean, it's 50, mile, 50 kilometers now forwards, 20 backwards, and the credit coefficient isn't too bad at all. So what is it about this tank? Well, firstly, this is how you have to get it. Bloody containers. Now, you can buy them for gold or you can buy them for cash. And you can get them for 15,000 gold. And as you can see there, or you can get them for 1,500 where you get two. Drop chance is 5%, guys. It is pretty, pretty low. You can get it with charms, but you need 30 charms. That's a lot of charms for a tier eight. You can also buy them about $9 for, what that, what's that, four containers, and $3 for one. What is it though? I mean, people are underestimating this tank because when you look at it, it looks like a heavy, it is not a heavy, guys. This is a medium tank. And being a medium tank, it doesn't have the best armor. The gun depression, well, it's rear-mounted turret, so the gun depression is always gonna suck. And because it's rushing, you can't get it over the side. But when we look at the armor profile, you can see here, it has nothing on the hull, a little bit on the front plate, and everything's on the turret. That allows it to have its mobility. This is it facing off a low which it will face because it's a tier 8 heavy and as you can see it's gonna easily penetrate the cupola and the front plates not a great side scraper because of the front plate but you need to keep this thing down however it has quite a low clearance it's really really low to the ground this is it hitting a low because a lot of people have said that its penetration really sucks and as we saw earlier it's actually not the worst penetration for a tier 8 medium. It's pretty bad for a heavy, but it's not bad for a medium. So, let's get that out of the way. It may look like a heavy, it's not. But what does it actually play like? Well, you know what? I actually like the tank. Oh, nice ammo rack. 
I had to say sorry, and I do say sorry. I actually like the tank because once you get it into your mind that whilst it looks like a heavy and it's got the gun of a heavy, it's actually a medium. Therefore, it's a second line support. This is not a tank you want to put on the front line. It's certainly not a tank you want to brawl with. Although, because it's so, so, so low to the ground, it is pretty difficult to pen and get the guns down. The turret, however, those cupolas are wide, wide open. It's got great mobility. The aim time is a bit long, I must admit. I mean, 13 seconds is a long time for a medium. But you are dishing out around 400 alpha on your standard AP. Now, let's talk about that penetration. Now, most mediums at tier 8 struggle with penetration. This medium is no different. You can do well in it, but it just means that you have to aim better. And as you see here, I mean, I've already done just shy of 2,000 damage. That was the Russian gunner doing his Russian gunner thing, which is sometimes he wants to work, sometimes he doesn't. I like the tank. I think it's it's a different type of tank and it's quite nice. I mean, I put, what, 530 under the back of that uh, poor old uh, Indian Panzer there, but he was facing me from the rear and I did have HE loaded. So it was always gonna happen. But look at this, I mean, Emil 2's are pretty, the Emil 1, sorry, is pretty difficult to pen in any tank apart from the bottom plate. And as you saw there, I mean, I managed to hit the bottom plate quite easily. So it's not as bad as everybody is making out. It's certainly not the worst tier eight medium in the premium stroke collector line. Maybe not the best medium as such because there are much better mediums in tier eight. But this is a medium. And that is what everybody is forgetting. It's not meant to have, you know, amazing, amazing stuff because then it would be broken. I mean, this thing's speed, this thing's, uh, this thing's damage output. If this thing also could penetrate everything frontally, it would be a broken tank. The idea behind this tank is you're a sniper. That's why it's got such a good aim time and that's why it's got such a good gun. And it has got a great gun for a Russian tank. Now, that experimental is difficult to pen in any tank in tier eight. And when he goes side on, I'm not struggling at all to pen his side of his turret. So it's not as bad as you think. What is the downside, I hear you say? Well, the downside is it's a tier eight and it's in blooming crates. That is the downside. Okay, so Wargaming have given you the opportunity to get it for gold and or cash. And the gold side isn't too bad. It's got a 5% drop chance. And to be fair, you get gold boosters and there's, there are, you know, there are ways that you can get gold in this game. But it's still a tier eight and it's a tier eight medium to boot. I would have been much happier had they have put this out just straightforward for cash. But herein lies the problem. If they were to put it straightforward out for cash, some of the reviews I've seen have absolutely ripped into this tank saying it's it's absolutely awful. Nobody would have bought it, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, when they put it in containers with the charms, either A, you're gonna spend and then be left with a load of charms in your garage, so you may think, well, might as well continue buying the containers, thus getting the tank, or you'll get the tank dropping out. Either way, the idea of the container is to entice you. I don't like that idea, but it's a marketing tool. Wargaming's a business, and more for you if that's how you wish to play it. But is it worth it? Well, if they sold it for outright cash, yes it is. Because it's in containers, well, that's a different kettle of fish. Because you're gonna have to get 30 charms to guarantee you this tank. Now, 30 charms makes the tank expensive if you don't get it to drop. That makes a mockery. I mean, I, I did a rough calculation and to get the tank 
to drop is going to cost you somewhere in the region of approximately $50, $53, $54 to be fair if you're buying the cash. That is expensive for a tier 8 medium. Let's not kid ourselves. So, is it worth it? Mm, not in crates, but it's a great little tank. It's not as bad as you think. I mean, I had a great time in it. You can see there, did just shy of 4,000 damage, only got a first class, but I enjoyed it. Anyway, that has been my take on the STG. I've been Fujit. I hope you uh, hope that's enlightened you to a kind of an extent. By all means, comment and everything below. I'd like to say a big thank you to all my YouTube members and Patreons who, without their support, these videos would be a lot harder, and to all my subscribers, because without you, these videos would be meaningless as well. If you've got any decent replays, wing them across to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. And until the next time, I'll say my usual thing. Stay safe up there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because you know, that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.